What is up, Canes fans? It is the Beast. Welcome back to the channel, and I'm back in my sweet spot. Got my cigar, got a little bourbon on the rocks, a little uh, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked, I believe it is. Hey, do me a favor, before we go any further, subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up, it tells Google, hey, this video's okay, and hit the little bell so you're notified when new videos are up. If you do all those three things, I'd be really happy. Also, you can follow me on all the socials at Miami Radio Beast. Now, here's the situation we find ourselves in. The University of Miami is um, coming off an absolute drubbing at the hands of the Duke Blue Devils. Now, you see me looking down because I, I printed some stats and wanted to make sure I got everything correct. Um, first with the score is 45-21 Duke. Records, Duke to 5-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the ACC. Miami drops to 3-4 and four overall, 1-2 and two in the ACC. Um, it was 82 degrees and sunny at the stadium as the Miami Hurricanes lost to Duke in football. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not surprised. Um, if my wife were here, but she's not, um, she would tell you that as I walked out the door, uh, she said, good luck. And I said, we're going to lose. When I saw the Vegas line and it was the Canes by 10, I laughed. I wished that gambling were legal in this state. And I know that I could go other places, but I just didn't want to go through the motions. Um, when I said go other places, I mean I could go online and figure something out. But uh, if 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 gambling, sports gambling, were legal in Florida, I would have put the life savings, as small as it is, on Duke with Miami favored by ten. I just did not have a good feeling. Now, I didn't think Miami would lose by twenty four points. I figured it would be a, a messy game. And in the end, there there would be a fumble and uh, or a pick six or something, and Miami would lose by like six, something like that, something really just heartbreaking. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I would rather get absolutely drubbed than lose in a heartbreaking fashion because pretty much from you know the. The second quarter on, I just kind of knew that bad things were going to happen to the University of Miami. Which is a shame, because Miami came out with some, uh, dare I say, pep in their step, right? Scored right off the bat. It was a nice first drive. I thought Josh Gaddis called a nice first drive. I thought there was some good uh, personnel groupings um, getting mixed up. I, I thought there was a good... Um, a good balance of run pass, some good plays being called, some innovative stuff. Miami goes down and scored. The defense has some pep in their step. I, I thought all was well. And then it all went to hell in a handbasket, whatever that means. I mean, let's start here. You can't turn the ball over eight times and think you're going to win a game. That's just not going to happen. Um... It's funny, I was just looking at the stats, and um, Akeem Mesidor, again, had a great game. Uh, I think six total tackles, two, two tackles for loss. But DJ Ivey led the Canes in tackles with seven or eight. I don't know. And the one thing I've learned over the years is when you look down at the stat sheet and you see a defensive back leading your team in tackles, you know it's not a good day, normally. Because that means... The front seven ain't getting the job done, and there's a lot of plays where things are getting to the secondary, and that means you're having a bad day. So let's let's discuss some things. One, sorry, I had to get the cigar back on. By the way, normally I drink the sea. Uh, sorry, drink. Hello. Normally I drink bourbon. 
and so I am there. But normally I smoke the CAO Flathead 660, not a paid endorsement. I think it's uh, the best cigar I've ever smoked. I love it. I have a million of them, but someone gifted me this no-name cigar, so I thought I would try it out. And I'll be honest with you, it's pretty horrible. But I unwrapped it, I cut it, I lit it, so I'm going to smoke it. Why waste a really good cigar on a bad day? Am I right? Am I right? So Tyler Van Dyke gets hurt. It looks like it's a right shoulder or elbow. Um, I actually... <laughs> so I know I'm all over the place, but... I'm a bit frazzled by what happened at the stadium today. Um, at halftime, I actually have two season tickets for my wife and child in the Cornerstone Club, which is like uh, section 238, but inside. It's kind of like a big suite where a bunch of people just party all game and don't watch football. But my wife and kid uh, have got stuff going on in their lives. There's soccer, there's this, there's that. They almost never go to the game. So I end up either selling the tickets or giving them to friends. Um, and but every game I do, I do know a bunch of people that sit in that cornerstone suite, and so I make the walk from the press box down to the uh, to to that end to the east end zone to go in there and say hello. I, I you know may or may not grab a drink because um, they don't have a bar in the press box, although they should at this point. Um, and I ran into a medical professional that I knew in there who. Uh, said that they had looked, you know, had watched the replay and kind of just saw how they were dealing with Tyler. They had a better angle from there than we did in the press box and said it looked like a shoulder. But, you know, who knows? Um, I do know this. I, I, the question was asked a million times after the game to every player that came in, hey, did you have a chance to talk to Tyler and see what his spirits were? And everyone said, well, I didn't see him. To me, Bells went off and said, well, he wasn't in the locker room after the game because they took him somewhere for, you know, more imaging, uh, more treatment, whatever could not be provided at the stadium. I don't know that. That's just a guess. I guess we'll find out. Mario said he didn't know, and, you know, we'll get better reports. I mean, of course he knows. He knows everything, but coaches never like to talk about injuries, so I knew that was he's You know, we asked the question, he didn't answer. It's fine. So it looks like Tyler may be out. I'm going to guess he's not going to play against Virginia. That means it's it's Jake Garcia's uh, team. Now, it's funny that uh, everyone wanted Jake, you know, if Tyler looks bad, right? In a couple weeks that Tyler looked bad because he was going through some things, everyone wanted Jake Garcia. And then Jake came in today and didn't look good except for the one pass, uh, the one touchdown pass, which was a good pass to Colby Young. By the way, that kid, how, how the hell, I don't know why he was at Lackawanna Community College, but damn, that kid good. That boy is good. Um, so, Jake didn't look great, and that was an issue. Um, and then uh, now everyone wants Jacory Brown to be the starter, and that's just a bad idea. Let me tell you that. You, know, you don't, trust me, you don't want to have to start the youngin'. You, that's a bad idea. Trust me, it is. Uh, just go back to, I mean, I'm old, but go back to Kenny Kelly getting hurt at Virginia Tech and Ken Dorsey comes in and throws a million interceptions and it's just a bad deal. Um, now, um, it ended up okay for, for Ken Dorsey, but you just, you don't want to put, you just don't, don't, don't start. You don't want to start Jacory yet. Just relax on that. Jake will get coached up and, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, my early thoughts were it looks like he just wants to throw regardless of whether it's open or not. But, you know, it's early in Jake Garcia's career. Miami can't run the football for some reason. Uh, let's look. They had um, 105 yards rushing, but um, 48 net. So when you take away the losses of, of Tyler being sacked... Um, and uh, Jake Garcia uh, being sacked, it only comes to 48 yards rushing. Uh, Duke had 200 yards rushing. Um, that's just under their average. But Miami was 13th in the country in stopping the run, allowing under 100 yards rushing per game, and the run defense could not stop Duke, especially uh, Riley Leonard, their quarterback, who had 72 yards rushing. And they knew it was ha they knew it was going to come. I mean, I 
had watched Mario's press conferences all week. They knew that Riley Leonard was going to run the football. They couldn't stop it. That's a problem. I think the cigar's out. The cigar stinks. It's horrible. Um, but, so let's, let's go with that. Miami couldn't stop the run. Miami turned the ball over too many times. Um, and when you have that, you're just not going to win. Now, there are some, some issues. Like, we're going to run it up the middle on fourth down again. That's going to be the thing. Now, you're lucky you got it the first time. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. The second time, like, you got to do, like, this has been a problem. This has plagued Miami for a couple of years now about, like, what do we do when it's fourth and short? Uh, well, let's run up the middle. And guess what? It's not going to work. Now, another issue is your personnel, right? You'd like a big back there. Um, so where's Thad Franklin? That is a good question. And I ran into somebody who is very intimately um, connected with Thad Franklin from going back to high school. And what I was told is that him and the running backs coach, Coach Smith, don't, don't get along. And that's why he wasn't seen playing time. And for whatever reason, I don't know why they don't get along. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know what the issue is. But whether it's coaching style or personality, I have no idea. And, you know, unless that thing got turned around, you'd see Thad Franklin in the transfer portal. Fine. Uh, okay. Like, I'm not going to cry over one running back. But fourth and short would be, if, you're, if you are going to run it up the middle, which I would like to not see... Thad Franklin would be the guy you'd put in to, to go in there. Didn't he didn't play at all? So th that's that. Um, and it just it just seemed like. Well, here, so fans were tweeting all game at all of us in the media about, hey, you got to ask Mario. Do the kids have heart? Do the kids have heart? And so we asked that Manny Navarro. I don't know if it was the first question or the second question, but early on in the press conference when Mario came in, um, Manny asked him, hey, do you, do you see that kids were playing without heart, that they weren't trying, giving maximum effort? And one, Mario didn't really like the question. I would, I would say that. But no coach would like the question. And so we asked the question. Manny Navarro from The Athletic asked the question. Mario gave the response was, well, well, we'll have to see that on the tape. But if that's, you know, I'm paraphrasing. But if that is the case, then they should go play somewhere else, which is the right answer. Mario ain't going to put up with no heart and lack of effort. That's not his deal. He wants all heart, all effort, 100 billion percent effort. So if there's kids that aren't putting in the, the time, the effort, don't have the heart, they won't be here. Um, and a lot of t people on Twitter were like, well, he lost the locker room already if he's saying this stuff and blah, blah, blah. No, he said it because we asked him to, and he had the appropriate response, which is if that's really the case, if there are people not trying, if there are people that don't have the heart, they won't, they're going to have to go find somewhere else to play because that is not what we believe in. That's not Miami Hurricane football. Um, so here's, you know, let's look at the big picture because why am I going to go back and further just dive into the, you know, X's and O's schematics and the nitty gritty from a game you lost to Duke when you're sub 500 on the season. Like it, it, it's, it's all about the big picture right now. Yes, it is going to take Mario time. Mario has said multiple times this season that they knew they had some issues coming here, but when they got a look under the hood of the car, it was much worse off than they thought. Now, a lot of people I saw during this game and after this game tweeting, well, for the money, why don't we just keep Manny Diaz if this is what's going to happen? Well, listen, you brainiacs. Most of those players that didn't have heart or didn't give effort or didn't get the job done today were Manny Diaz's players. Notice 
And Alex Dono made this point. I want to shout out Alex Dono. Someone tweet at him and say, hey, Beast gave you a shout out uh, on the YouTube. Um, Alex Dono, who's on the post game show on the flagship station on the uh, state run media, um, made the point that the guys who are standing out, right? The Messidors, uh, the Colby Youngs, uh, Harris are, are, are Mario guys, right? They're either a freshman or transfer portal, uh, or Colby Young, Lackawanna Community College in to Miami, uh, in the summer. Uh, those are the Mario guys that we love, right? The Manny guys seem to not be getting the job done. So why would you want more of that? Now, listen, everyone's going to point to Nick Saban had a shitty year at Alabama when he started, but the next year he went 12 and 2. So, you hope for that kind of rebound. I don't know that it'll be that easy for Miami. I know that we don't have patience to wait two years, three years for it to turn around. But I think Mario is the right guy for it. And a lot of people are like, well, Mario's a horrible game day coach. Mario reminds me a lot of Butch Davis. Why? Butch, I don't think, was a good game day coach at all. I mean, how many times did we see, uh, but if you remember back to the Miami Butch Davis years, uh, how many times did we see a Miami team come out of a TV timeout and have to call timeout because they couldn't get right in the huddle and had to either too many men on the field or didn't know the play or whatever happened all the time. Bush Davis was not uh, coming off the mountain with the tablets when it came to, to call, uh, game day coaching. Mario is a program builder, just like Butch Davis was a program builder, right? Needs to have the right assistant coaches in place in order to get the job done. Now, Butch did. Butch had eventually got the right coaches in place, right? Well, whatever you say, I mean, you're, a lot of you were, you know, busy calling into the radio stations back then, but Larry Coker was a good offensive coordinator and, and a good quarterbacks coach. Um, Donnie Solinger, Art Kehoe, you know the the staff, right? Vernon Hargraves on defense. Curtis Johnson as a wide receivers coach, right? Best assistant coaches that Miami has had uh, in a long time. Uh, going back to, you know, you know, a lot, there has been a lot of great assistant coaches that have come through Miami, but that staff was really good. Um, you know, you had Grace Schiano who came in to take over for Bill Miller as a defensive coordinator. Um, and then, you know, Chuck Pagano, who ended up being an NFL head coach, is your, is your secondary coach. I mean, you had, uh, you had a great coaching staff underneath the program builder in Butch Davis. Butch was there to be the closer in recruiting and build a program all around with discipline, strength and conditioning, all of that stuff. That's what Butch did. That's what Butch instilled in the Miami program. Larry Coker ended up coaching the team that won the championship. Butch put the foundation in place to get there. That's what Mario is doing. He's putting the foundation in place. Okay? Putting the foundation in place. Now, you got to make sure he's got the right assistance underneath him. And there can be some questions asked about the coordinators and the position coaches. And I don't, I, I definitely think those questions can be asked. But Mario is not the, you know, the savant play caller, right? He's not that guy. We don't have the, you know, 37-year-old genius play caller uh, that is the head coach. We don't have the, you know, the Nick Saban that it was known as a defensive uh, guru as a head coach. What we have is a program builder. And that's completely fine. You just need to get the right assistance underneath him to get right. And I think it will get right. Listen, the administration is now finally pouring money into the program to make sure that everything else that is needed to build the program is right. Now you just need to get the right players. They need to be coached up. And it needs to be executed on game day. It takes a second. Now, again, I don't want to be accused of, you know, sucking on uh, the Mario Cristobal teat. But I, I, I know Mario. I know his disposition. I know what he, what makes him go. And I get what he's trying to do. And I think he will get there. So this could be a bad season. I mean, Miami's chances of going to a bowl game at this point, you have to win three more games. 
right? Where are they going to come from, right? FSU, that's going to be hell at home. You're going to go beat Clemson on the road. You're going to go do that. So now you're counting on a Virginia, Georgia Tech, Pitt situation. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's okay. Like, unfortunately, we need to be a little bit more patient than we're used to being. That's the bottom line. Um, I don't know what's going to happen next week at Virginia. It's a 1230 start. Who knows what the weather is going to be. It's going to be cooler than it was in Miami today with 82 and sunny. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, Virginia's not an incredibly tough place to play. It's a beautiful place to go watch a football game. I can tell you that. Um, if you want to take an ACC road trip, go to Charlottesville. It is, huh, it is a chamber of commerce environment when you go to watch a game in Virgi at Virginia. Um, so, you know, if you're going up there, have fun, enjoy it. Uh, go to the Aberdeen Barn in Charlottesville. It's it's a great steakhouse. It's one of the uh, ju it's one of the staples of the Beast uh, road trip situation. Um, I am not making the trip. I am going. I try to make one road trip a year. Um, I do it so that I you know because I don't cover the team every day like I used to. I don't travel to every game like I used to. But uh, I I like to tr go to one road trip a year just to. Just because it, it kind of keeps me right, right? It makes me feel like, okay, I'm still a, attached to this program. So I'm going to go cover the Georgia Tech game for better or for worse. I got my, everything is, is, is ready to go to go to Atlanta. Got the flight, got the hotel. I got to make the resis. I'm not telling you where because I don't want you to take my resis, but I got a special place in Atlanta and it'll be fun, win or lose, because I like to go on the road and see what's up with this team. So that's that. I mean, listen. I could have pulled out the Pepto-Bismol today, but we've gotten to the point where, and I think this is this is my final statement. Unfortunately for Miami, and I even heard, I heard Don Bailey Jr., feel free to tweet at him if he's on Twitter, let him know I'm, I'm shouting him out. I heard Don Bailey Jr. on, on the post-game show with Dono say, hey, it's, it's been like this for 20 years. Uh, and I wouldn't say 20 years, but uh, I would say a good 18, 17 years. It's just been all the same. Um, where, whereas, I kind of feel like, and this is so unfortunate, like Miami's turned into a Virginia football or a Duke football or NC State football, uh, where it's like every Saturday, it's like, hey, we could win, we could lose. Let's go, you know, have a little fun and, you know, we'll go to the stadium and it's just, uh, it's, you know, that's what we do. We don't get our hopes up. We don't, uh, you know, we're, we're not, it's not like, it's not like it used to be where we're like, we were going to, you know, rock the buses of the, the opponents coming in and they're going to be scared when they get off the bus. It's just not that anymore. I hope it can get back to that. But, you know, it's like, I came home, I'm like, should I grab the Pepto-Bismol? Do I feel that sick? And it's like, no, it's just kind of like apathy. It's like, hey, I went to the game today. I covered it. I watched it. Yay. Okay, what am I doing on a Saturday night? You know what I'm doing? Drinking the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. And I guess I have to relight this horrible cigar. I don't know. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.